Good morning, everybody. Shane McCusker here, Intelligent Software. Today, I'm joined by Bill Borman of True and Recruiting on Blog and a whole lot of other things. Uh, we're going to be talking about social recruiting and a continuation of the, the series of webinars that I've been doing recently. All the webinars are on my blog page, uh, intel-sw.com forward slash blog. Uh, before we get into the webinar, I want to answer a question which came in as a result during the week. It actually threw me a little bit. People said to me, why do you run these webinars, Shane? Uh, you, you seem to have this massive interest in South Africa, and strangely enough, you don't sound very South African. What's going on here? Um, and this happens from time to time, so I thought I'd better address the issue. Um, intelligent software, we sell software to recruitment companies, uh, and I don't force that message over from our webinar channel. Uh, the reason that we do the webinars is to try and encourage recruiters, particularly recruitment agencies, to want to work in better ways, to want to make more placements with less effort to make more money. And that's what our, the focus of our software is. The webinars and the way that the reason we do the webinars is to share information from global experts, global thought leaders, to a pool of recruiters in the hope that you will want to work in smarter ways, do more, recruit better, up your levels of professionalism. And if you want to do that, then hopefully you'll want to have a look at the type of software we do and the services we provide, maybe also other people's software as well. That doesn't bother me overly. I want, I want to encourage change and development and continuous improvement within the recruitment community. Through doing the webinars and the social media stuff that we do, uh, it's actually a fantastic way to be able to engage with um, our market, to engage with the recruitment community, to share best practice and do all sorts of exciting things. Uh, one of the things that we are in particularly focused, apologies for those of you who are not in South Africa, I know we've got a, a reasonable community of listeners that aren't in South Africa, but later on, um, well actually just in over a month's time, on the 9th and 11th of November, uh, Bill is coming to South Africa, Cape Town and Johannesburg uh, to do True SA. Um, and True SA is the recruitment unconference. Bill, tell me, I, I was going to witter on myself, but you're the man of, of the moment. Can I explain on conference in, in a 30 second sound bite? Different. <laughs> I think it's probably, the, it's probably the, the best single word to sum it up. Um, it, 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 it's conversation, really. It, it, it's totally open for you. Uh, it, instead of you uh, in a traditional conference, you go and get served up um, what the conference organizers and speakers have decided to serve up to you. It's you decide you deciding what you want to get served to you in terms of content. So it, it's you having a, 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 a it, we run three tracks an hour, a track is a discussion topic, um, it, we don't have any formality so you're encouraged to move between tracks if the conversation isn't, isn't what you want. Uh, and I'd say it's a place where you can go and find um, experts and um, uh, and people with opinions and practitioners on any area in recruiting. It's not it, 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 there is obviously a, a social media element, but it's not purely social media. Um, if you come in and say, "Look, I'm having a, uh, I'm having issues with candidate control. Um, I want to get some opinions from other recruiters," we'll go set a track up on candidate control. So it's you bringing your topics and, and saying, "Right, the, it's set, everybody's setting their own individual agendas and saying these are the things I want to talk about." Cool. Wonderful. And if you want any more information on that, there's a website, truesa.coza. Um, Bill's an organizer, I'm an organizer, and we also have ABSO as organizers. We're also hopefully going to get and recruit a, a range of, of track leaders to come in and, and lend their wisdom to the community. But to be honest, everybody who turns up uh, lends their wisdom to the community. I've been, as you know, involved with, with all Bill, most of Bill's true um, events going global around the world. Uh, I'm doing my best to keep up with you, Bill. Uh, and uh, certainly they've changed the way that we work and the way we do business. Anyway, enough about me. Let's move on to the subject of the day. Um, we've been doing a lot of webinars and stuff on sourcing candidates uh, through LinkedIn, through Facebook, through Google+, through Twitter, through all the channels. And it's quite flashy and clever and makes me look like a really clever individual to be able to pull names out of a hat um, in all sorts of clever ways. The difficulty, of course, starts then because from a recruiter's point of view, you say, well, we've now got as many names as we want, fantastic people, but those are fantastic people who are in jobs, don't know me, don't know the job that I'm looking for, may not be interested at all. And so you've got now a much, much bigger problem of trying to 
engage with those people in a way that you can do business with them and enable them to help you do business. And this was not a problem whenever you used to just run an advertisement in the newspaper or the job board. People applied to you, you knew they were interested, you knew they were active job seekers. They had to impress you with their abilities. Uh, now it's a case where you have to be much more impressive to your community. Uh, and Bill, you're uh, a man of the moment with regard to social media, one of the most influential people in the world, social media wise, but that's not where you started from. You started as a recruitment trainer doing what you would refer to as old school recruiting. Started as a recruiter, you know. Start, started as a recruiter, I beg, I beg your pardon. Which has never, which has never really, never really trained, changed, albeit I've, I've had quite a, a training. Uh, I'm making you the presenter of the session now, Bill, so you can show your screen if you yeah, like. Yeah, that, 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 that's excellent. I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up and we'll, we'll get onto the screen. But uh, I think the point that you're making here, which, 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 which is something which um, we need to be aware of, starting off when we're talking about messaging, is it's never actually been, e it's never been, e been uh, we've never had an easier time when we haven't had more information or been able to locate more people. And that's great from a source point of view because it's very easy for us to to find names but in the we've been through certain phases as, as as recruiters and if we look at the last three phases the, the last three decades over over how people have worked originally anyone who's, who's been around in recruiting for a while will know um, we, we, we actually know that it in the past um, it was about it it, it. it was a very proactive process before we had the internet. It was a case of a small number of candidates, usually local people who we knew quite well. We dealt relationships. We had relationships with them. We had relationships with smaller numbers of clients, but that, that those relationships had more depth, um, and we worked in smaller areas. So it was it, it was much easier to get known. We're now in a position where actually you can find pretty much anybody you want via the internet. And you can message them via the internet, whether that, whether that's through LinkedIn or any of those social channels. So I think I think we've hit it. We've we've actually reached reached the point, or we've we've hit the the problem where it's no longer post and pray, which is what we call the internet age. Put them out there, sit back, wait and see who comes in, and and start dealing and speaking with the ad response. We're now in a situation where it, where it is source and spray. Um, by source and spray, I mean finding names, send out a message. How many times do we see the message even in our own inboxes coming in? Let's let's start off talking about LinkedIn. Um, because your background has got recruiting or it's got engineering or Java programming, because your profile's got it in, you start getting messages saying, I've got the perfect job for you, I've got a great job for you, I've got something that it, it exactly, it exactly meets what you need, why, why don't you contact me? And we we reach a situation. I know, I know Shane. We we've spoken on a, a previous webinar where someone's asked for help on this because sending a lot of messages out, getting nothing back. If that's the situation, as anyone listening listening into this, then um, who who's identifying with that? Got to look at the message and see whether the, whether the message is right. Um, the, the, uh, and there's two things, three things that are, that are important here. Um, which is how I audit messages and say this is the way in which we communicate and make that first approach because um, I think we've got to go back to remember now connections are, 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 are quite loose. The people we're connected with, even in social media channels, it, it'll only be 5 or 10% of people that we actually have any kind of depth of a relationship with them. The rest of them is an internet connection. A connection in a network is not a candidate network. It's not people we're working with, it's people we're connected to, and that's quite different. So if we want to turn people from being connections in a network or fans into candidates, which is what our, our, our real challenge is in recruiters, we've got to look at three things in our messaging. The three things in our messaging, I call it the three R's. These should, this should be the principle that we have in our organization. And that's that we've done three things every time we communicate with people in any way. The first R is research. We've done a bit of research and we've looked for a reason. We, 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 uh, and we've identified three reasons as to why we believe that individual should move to the next step. And, and, and always be thinking about what the next step is or what the next stage is. So if our, can, if our candidate is, if our candidate is, um, if we reach it out, reach it out to talk to someone, get them to come and talk to us. 
do your research, find the three points. And your three points start with, number one, having an in-depth understanding of, of the job description or job specification. In any job spec, I have an area called points of appeal. That's sitting down and looking at what are the six or seven selling points of this job. And then when I'm looking at when I'm looking at, at, at somebody's profile on LinkedIn, I'm picking out I'm picking out the reasons. If you're working with consultants, before they pick the phone up or send an email out or anything else, ask them what's the next step and what's the re what's the compelling reason? What do we have that we can sell that can get that will get our candidate to move to the next step? So let, let, let's just have a look at it and say, right, okay, what do I need to do? Well, if I'm going to be reaching out to someone and sending them a message on, let's let, let's talk about LinkedIn today. We will look at the other channels briefly, but but let's use LinkedIn. Um, they're gonna they're gonna have a landing page, and that landing page is going to be back to my profile. So if I'm working on a particular assignment, I'm going to change my professional headline to reflect that and put in some reference. Because when anyone gets my message, the only thing they're gonna gonna see is this top box. So when it says the person who's contacted you is Bill Borman, this is what this is what the message is going to do. So I can put an advert in there that says, yeah, this is me, this is right. The second thing is my update is going to be a link to the job spec or some information which I'm going to put in there. So when they it, it, when somebody gets a message, they're going to see this top bit which is my advert, say, right, okay, I understand why they've contacted me. Now let's go in now let's go in and have a look. Um, they go into my profile, they're going to see my update, which can be a link to the job that says, this is what I'm working on. So this is all part of my preparation. The next thing is my research in terms of looking at it and saying, right, okay, who is right? Um, uh, who is right? Uh, interestingly, actually, if you want to see, your, see if your messages are working, you'll see this section over on the right-hand side of the screen that said, who's viewed your profile? If you're sending out 20 messages, have a look at how many people, how many of those 20 people have looked at your profile because that will give you an idea about how effective you're being in your messaging. If you've sent out 20 messages, 15 people have looked at your profile, um, none, of them have, none, of, none of them have come back to you, then you know, um, you know whether, you've actually got, whether you've got an issue. Um, so what, what, what do I do? Where do I do? My research, I'm looking at the job spec, then I'm having a look and saying, right, okay, let's have a look. First of all, let's find one thing in somebody's professional profile that says, yeah, I, I need to be talking to this person. Then let's go in and let's get into the second and third bits. Let's have a look in um, their detail. And their detail needs to be in somewhere here in the job description. What's the compelling reason? What's the reason I'm messaging them? So I get my three points. I do my research. I've looked at the job. I've looked at the person I want to message. I've looked on each one as an individual message rather than let's just send out 100 messages. And I've found the reason. I've found the reason why. I've looked and identified a reason why they should call me based on the information which is served up to me via LinkedIn. I need to make sure that is what gets across. So when the message goes across, I'm, the second thing I'm showing is relevant. This is why I want to have a conversation with you. This is what I've got. This is what's right for you. We've all had spam messages. Going back to the the evolution of source and spray, we've all had those saying, "Got a perfect job for you." I'm sitting there as a candidate saying, "Hang on, how do you know you how do you know you have the perfect job for me when we have no relationship? When we have no relationship." Um, uh, so I, I know straight away that what you're doing is fishing. You need to make me feel, as a candidate, put yourself in the candidate's shoes, you need to make me feel, as a candidate, um, that uh, that you've messaged, that, that, that that message isn't just because you've opened the phone book and stuck a pin in it and rung me up you, or, 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 or sent me an email. You've got to make me feel this reason behind it. To so some extent, Bill, you what, you're, what you're suggesting yeah. is just professionalism, I would, I would argue. I think it's one of the things that is, you know, and I don't mean this at the, the recruitment industry particularly, but so many people, times people ring up the uh, to Industry, me. actually, you know, yeah, it, it, you know let, 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 well, we look at it from a recruiting point of view and, and the personalization. What is more personal than looking for a job? Look, look, looking for a job or, you know, looking for a job or looking for a relationship. And if you look at the, 
the the, the level of messaging. Um, it, it's for uh, in a way the, it, it's kind of um, because we have all this information on people. We kind of make we make the assumption of missing the missing the basic steps, which is just going back and saying this is the reason you're right. So that's the first bit of research. But Bill, can I ask ask, 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 ask a question? Just um, as a if if I was a recruitment manager managing a team of people, and I'm identifying a problem whereby I've got lots of activity, lots of people sending messages and getting very poor response, then would you be recommending a process whereby you well, actually first, first either write point, down? But yeah, I mean, I mean, the first important point is. Have you got a matrix to measure that? You know, you, you need to actually be looking at that as data, which is what are we getting back from the the messages we're sending out with the, the activity? Um, because very, very easy to become a spam artist. Wonderful. So, is it, is it, so it's it's about putting a process in place that enables you one to measure what it is you're actually doing. If you measure it correctly, you can identify faults or areas for improvement. And then, with regards to the process that you want to implement, with regards to communicating with people, it's about finding the things that are going to be right for that individual and approaching them in a manner which is professional and appropriate uh, and um, uh, and, and is is is, is going to yield a good result? What sort of result do you think you can actually get? I mean, if you're approaching people in a professional, credible way and putting positions to them that are appropriate to them, what 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 is I, I the think, best I case scenario? You, 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 can, you can get you can get close to you can get close to the reaction where you're going to get a response. Now that response isn't necessarily yeah, I'll come in and, and have an interview with you, or I'll have a conversation, or I'll have a chat with you. Um, but I think you can you you can get to the point where you're working on about one in three messages get you an outcome. There will always be a certain amount that drop off because of volume of messages, um, speed of people, and, and appropriateness. But uh, I think you can work on uh, work on the fact that if you for, uh, of three candidates you find one in three will respond to your first approach. You can then then find other ways of doing it like. Um, you know, picking the phone up and talking to people is always a, a, a good one and a dying art. Mm. Um, but what, 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 once we've found people, I think if you're going back, and you, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to identify what it is you want to achieve on the call because a, can, a, a candidate approach, whether it is by electronic means, by email, or by telephone, a, a, a candidate approach, and, uh, by the way, I'll just throw in another tip. Um, it, it's something I know some, somebody I work with, uh, I've got them doing recently, when we're going, getting absolutely nowhere through all the messages of, of, of getting hold of people, we've actually started sending out handwritten notes occasionally, and, and that's been getting a fantastic response. There's um, a, we've, got, we've got a question coming in here, Bill, yeah. uh, from Lloyd. Uh, Shein, what's the risk of putting this much information on your profile that you are making the candidate feel uncomfortable that their boss might see that they are connected with the recruiter? LinkedIn shows off other connections that they are connecting with you, doesn't it? That's not quite correct, but go ahead, Bill. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, um, well, uh, of showing that level, of uh, showing that level of information. Um, actually, it, it, uh, I, it, it's not a major issue in terms in terms of me in terms of messaging because first of all, um, to receive a message, they're either going to be already connected with you, in which case it, it, it's not an issue, or they don't necessarily have to connect with you to communicate with you. Um, what you, which is one of the reasons, for this very reason, it's the reason you want to also have information on your profile. So when, when they get the message, they may not want to connect with you, but they will want to go and have a look at the information. And if your profile has multiple ways of connection, so say, here's my phone number, here's my email address, here's my Facebook, they can connect with you wherever they want to. So um, essentially, Lloyd, that, that, that's not an issue once you've done that. I also think that's another reason to point out to people that they should be constantly connecting. So when people network with people, it, it, it doesn't flag up any alarm bells. Uh, there is a, a very valid point there, though, that I do know of candidates who do not want to connect with recruiters because it will immediately appear on their profile page saying, Shane is now connected to Bill Borman, and I don't necessarily want to let everybody know I'm connected to Bill Borman if Bill Borman happens to be a recruiter. But the point is that, um, you know, what we're doing here is you're creating content to engage I, people I, 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 and a I, channel I, I, of communication. Yeah. 
I, I, I think so, but I think the, the the other point I would make is that's change. You know, that's changing. That's that, that's quite a, um, a, 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 a the way in which people connect and network has, has changed um, considerably. First of all, not many people are going into detail to say, right, who is this? Who who is this person? So the first thing I'd say is, look, um, if you keep your profile very loose, if you hide the fact that you're a recruiter, um, if you keep it very ambiguous. Um, the odd person who won't connect with you it, as a recruiter will be counterbalanced by the huge number of people who will never find you because they can't find your profile. So put as much information on your profile. Make your profile like a website. Make make it your advert and put it out there. You might get the odd occasional person who doesn't want to connect with you for that reason. They will, If they're looking, want to, want to engage with you, they will find another way of talking to you. But I think, again, this is also the way in which you conduct yourself in any of the channels. If the only conversation you're having with people is about a job, um, then uh, it, it's going to start to, it, it can raise question marks. If, however, there's plenty on your profile, as well as job content, about the fact that you are posting in groups, you're asking questions, you're setting polls, you're doing all kinds of things which trigger or create, we're looking to create trigger points for engagement. So we're looking to put different things in which will connect me with you, will get you talking to me. Sometimes it's going to be about a job, other times it's going to be about a lot of other things, if I'm targeting my audience correctly. So I hope that I hope that answers that question for Lloyd. But if it doesn't, just just pop something else something else in the box. Um, but before we move on from this, then Shane, any other questions coming into the stream? Um, no, well, not right now. I was having a conversation with somebody about my accent and where I was from. But um, <laughs> back onto topic. The uh, yeah, I'm just going to reiterate something you said there, Bill, because this is a different form of communication. This is, you know, we're we're trying to do advertising through a social channel and to some extent there's a conflict there so what you're actually saying is that you know you're you're creating trigger points for engagement which means that you're creating lots and lots of things to have nice chatty conversations about yeah. you don't necessarily have to go straight for the jugular and say let, we've, let, we've, let, we've got let, a job let, and this is all we're going yeah, to talk let, about let, let's think about it like this Shane let, let, let's explain it like this if you hire an accountant, if that's what you do, you're a, you're a specialist accountant recruiter, and you know that every Wednesday and Thursday it's accountant's happy hour in the local bar, you're going to make a point of being in that bar every Wednesday and Thursday to make connections that you can. Um, if you walk into that bar holding up a sign saying, I want to hire people, you go up to people and say, are you looking for a job, are you looking for a job, are you looking for a job, they're going to throw you out really quickly. Or they're actually going to say, we're not really interested, this is hard to say, or this is people, you know, if you're coming up to me and telling me you've got the perfect job for me, you don't yet know what my background is, you haven't even seen my CV yet, you don't know what job I'm looking for, I don't believe you. It's very simple, it's quite straightforward. So what you would do is you're going to go into that place and you're going to get to know people, you're going to get to know certain people, you're going to find out who the influencers are in that environment by, uh, and get to know them. And you're going to talk to people and in the process of that, you're going to come around into the conversation to some of the things you're going to talk or comment about are going to be work, job seeking, employment related. And, and, the, and those people through connection, association are going to become your candidates. That's essentially what we're doing in any of the social channels. We need to have a presence before we have an, have an approach. Obviously, the more people we're connected with, the bigger our network is, um, the more likely we can then get third-party introductions. One of the things that people check out when you approach them for the first time with, with a message is, who are you connected with, who they know. That, that applies to any of, the, any of the social channels from Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, wherever that might be. So, sorry, Bill. Uh, I'll interrupt you again because there's another. There's just another quick call thing here, and I'm afraid this may be my problem. Somebody says you were talking about the three hours, but but I interrupt you before you completed you the did. three hours were. You did. Sorry I was going that. back to that. Uh, the three hours are relevance is the first one. So making sh do, research. Sorry. So doing your research to say what are the three points we. What, what are the points I'm going to get across to this candidate? Let's think about it. Let's look at the job spec, look at the candidate. Where is the match? And if the match is there, that's going to be my 
the first part of my introduction in whatever message I'm putting across. Where's the relevance? This is what you need to communicate in particular. This is the relevance. This shows that I've thought about you. This shows that I'm not just speaking to everyone saying I've got a job. You need to feel that this is a personalized message. The word you is very, very important in messaging. Um, this is why I think this might be right for you. So it's relevant. It's making sure it's relevant. One of the things you want to do with any recruiters working for you is, if they're sending out messages, go out and say, right, why should this guy, why should this girl be interested in this job? What's the relevance to them? Are we communicating that in our opening, in our message, making that important? Um, and the third part is reference, which is we're giving reference to our research. We're showing, demonstrating in, in a short message, we've looked at that, their profile, we've thought about it, we're not just, um, we're, we're not just sticking, a, sticking a pin in the phone book and, and messaging people because we've found them and they have a bit of audit, a bit of accountancy, a bit of engineering background. Um, so it's the three R's, research, relevance and reference uh, and that really needs to be the rule in all of your messaging social or otherwise what else Shane uh, have we got coming in on the on the stream? yeah I'm gonna uh, just want to put a point of clarification out uh, when you were talking about updating your profile as a recruiter yeah. that's different to looking at somebody else's profile to find these relevance and reference points um, the, the it's whenever you put say you put a job description or that I am currently recruiting for a whatever in your profile that is there so when people find you post your message to them is not that correct so it's not it's yeah, not well, about yeah, sending what, what, out what, 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 this what, is what you, we're what, looking what you, for a message what do, yeah what you what you've got to do Shane and I, I think this is one of the problems people have with with, with LinkedIn create a LinkedIn profile um, and that profile becomes static. So the message which you're sending out then doesn't have reference. Um, it, it loses the reference, it, it loses reference to, to what you're actually trying to talk to people about. So if we then say, okay, no, that's not, um, that, that's not what I want to do. Let, let, if we then go in and say, right, okay, let's have a look. At, let, let, let's get in and have a look at a profile. We've got certain things, so there's certain things you're going to see. This top section here, which you can see here, where it says Bill Borman, the founder of True Events, this is my LinkedIn business card. So this is what the only thing that people see. They don't see the rest of the profile if I send them a message. But then, if they're going to get a message, if they're going to get a message from me, and they'll go right, okay, we know our messages arrive in inboxes. So if we look at it, you can see it right, okay. Um, what do I get? You can see what I mean because I've got Adam Butler here sent me a message. Um, okay, that one's an invite. <coughs> um, or if we if we look at this one, right? Okay, let's ha let's have a look at this message. Um, what do I get? I've got a professional head. You can see I've got a professional headline before I've got a message. Well, if it's interesting, I'm either going to reply or I'm going to go. Let's go and have a look at the profile. So I'm going to jump in and have a look at the profile, see what it see what it actually says. You know that that, that that's then that, that's then what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm going to go and have a look at the profile. So I've got to think of it as being an ad. What do I want people to see? So if I'm searching for something, I want to put some relevance to what I'm searching in my professional headline, and I also want to update my profile. So if you go back to my profile, you'll see I've got certain touch points where I can do that. I've got my update, which should enable me to do an update. And um, if, if I'm posting a job description and a link, put a picture in it. It looks much better and better in an update. You know, think about that. Think about how it's going to look. Where else can I put? Where else can I put information? I can add slide share presentation, which I've done. Um, you know, so I've put on presentation or video of certain jobs or information, which I, which I think is right. Um, and I've also added. Things like um, I also have the opportunity to add uh, profile in the top. If you go in the edit section, you can see pro portfolio. The portfolio, which was set for designers, actually means you can put any documents or, or, or any downloadable documents in. That means whatever I'm going to be messaging people about, I'm giving them a source of reference 
on my LinkedIn profile. Um, so move your LinkedIn profile about according to the work that you're doing at the moment, particularly in the update, the professional headline, and any attached documents. Bill, I'm just going to jump in there. There's, I'm going to make another point which may, which may move our conversation on, um, or, or may not if you choose not to. Um, one of the interesting things about LinkedIn is that LinkedIn is, I think, one of the best repositories of information, one of the best places to get information about candidates from. But as social media platforms go, LinkedIn isn't actually that social. And what you're talking about here is trying to put more social, interesting stuff about individuals up there. I, I, the, I, I, I'd, I'd have to, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to, um, I, I, I'd have to take exception with that comment, really. Um, <laughs> LinkedIn, LinkedIn um, is social, just not used in a social way. Yeah. You know, it has all of the social features that we need into, and that we have in any other channel, like the questions and answers, like the groups, like the opportunity to uh, the, the opportunity to post, and um, the opportunity to update your profile, to add things to it, to make your profile tailored to the work you're doing at, at that moment in time. We just don't use it in that way. We, we use it very much as a static reference point and. And it's amazing, you know, just by moving things about, like having a good bright colour picture at the top, um, having having a picture, always having a picture in your update, adding a video, adding a presentation about the jobs that you're searching on, you're going to be amazed at the response you're going to get back. Because what you've done is you've taken time to link your profile to the message you're sending out. If you're taking time, you are serious about what you're doing. You're not just spamming out. Okay, well, in that case, I stand corrected, and I suppose I should stand corrected, given the fact that LinkedIn is my primary channel for <laughs> communication and, and engagement on social media. Yeah. The, but the, the, the notion of some of the other platforms, like your, if I hesitate to say your favorite platform, certainly the one that I associate you most closely with is yeah. Twitter, is a pure social platform platform in, 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 in many, many senses. Um, and in areas like that, it's actually, it can be easier to directly engage with candidates, whereas LinkedIn, particularly because LinkedIn try to, to actively discourage people from connecting on LinkedIn unless you absolutely know the person. So LinkedIn is actually a bit of a discourager with this free flow of information, whereas Facebook, to a lesser extent, Twitter, to a very greater extent, are much more interesting places to understand personality and emotions and feelings and, and, and interact with people in a in a more personal way. Is that is that correct? Is that your view? And how does that affect your approach to engage? Well, Twitter, Twitter's a conversation place, first of all. So uh, I think that there's a couple of things you want to do, which is um, any it, it, the difference with Twitter, this has been the Twitter effect in the way in which people network. It's actually changed all of the social media channels. Um, in terms of what's acceptable and what isn't. Twitter was the first channel where you could connect without having an invite. So nobody needs to invite you to be friends with somebody. Um, they can block you if they really object to what you do, but, but that generally doesn't happen very often. So you, you, you can basically connect with anyone and you can message anyone. They, they don't have to accept your message. Uh, you can message anyone. So it, it, it's pretty free flow conversation. So I will always, well, one, one of the things I look at is when I found people um, I also want to collect their, if I found a profile of somebody that I want to message because they've come up in a search, best way in which I'm going to be able to engage with them is to actually find their Twitter, uh, is to find their Twitter contact details on their LinkedIn profile. So once I've found their Twitter details, I want to add it. I also use an application, by the way. I'm just going to show you, um, show you a particular application here because it's one of, one of the things is, it, one of the things you want to look at is how well are you, um, uh, how well are you actually blinging your profile? And, and the profile I want to show you is um, the Twitter, the Twitter application. Which, um, if you don't have this we, in your more button, you can add it in. It's one of the applications you can add into LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but. I'm, I, in, in this particular case, I'm, I'm not. Uh, we're going to it slowly there. So, uh, um, what, what I what I actually what I actually use my Twitter application for um, is uh, within uh, with, within the within the 
Twitter application, you can see this. You can see all the things that you can start to put onto your profiles. Um, there's certain things that certain things we're going to recommend to you. Slide share. Um, tweets enables you to actually get in and see what your LinkedIn connections are tweeting about quite specifically. WordPress lets you put a blog in there. Um, polls, obviously Google presentation. But if we if we then have a look at the uh, Twitter, if we then have a look at the Twitter application, tweets by LinkedIn. Um, once we're in, uh, there is a, a section in here which I just want to show you, which is which is quite important. Which is once once you've once you've had a chance to to actually get in um, through your LinkedIn profile, you can pick up people. You can look. On the right-hand side of settings, you can find those people with LinkedIn accounts who you are not, who who you're not, who you're actually not tweeting. This also means you can run Twitter out of LinkedIn, um, which which is pretty effective because it means you can update both places, so you can share your share on LinkedIn status and update Twitter. What 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 I would recommend is you go LinkedIn to Twitter, not Twitter to LinkedIn in terms of a multi-poster. For lots of reasons, and it, it, Twitter is the place where you can do simple engagement about simple topics, where people will talk to you, they'll respond, and they'll follow you back. Go and have a look at your information. So if you're getting that nowhere with your LinkedIn messages, have a look if they've got a Twitter profile. Try and reach them that way, and you'll find that, the, that, that you'll find that they have one, that they have one of three. Um, about thirty percent of people list a, list a Twitter profile um, on their on their LinkedIn. Equally. If you go to LinkedIn, you're getting nowhere. Um, look at the website because you'll very often find in the website and contacts and email address. So you'll be able to reach them, reach them in a different way. Um, what, what else do we have in on on the stream, Shane? I'm, I'm conscious we've got about nine minutes left. So what what else do we have? No, if we. If oh, we sorry, sorry, Bill. I didn't mute myself. No, <laughs> there's there's no other questions up there at this moment in time. So carry on. Yeah, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to fire them. Now, the other, the other quick channel I want to show you in terms of um, in terms of messaging is uh, is actually you can message anyone in Facebook just by finding their by finding their detail. When you when you found their detail, let's let, let's go in and just have a look at this, um, and I'll show you how to actually how to find and message somebody who might be out out of your profile but but reachable. Once you've found them, just over in this section is the message section. This is where we can message people in Facebook. So you can find places to find people and send them off, and just send them off messages. You can put anything in there with a link. You don't have to be friends with anyone or, or, or following anyone. So try all the channels if, you, if you're wanting to get hold of people. You know, try try all the channels and, uh, and get in and see see what you can come up with. But it, it, it's back to the back to this message and research. It, the other point that I, I really want to stress um, for the for the last ten minutes is actually uh, actually going back exactly the same principles. Um, but let's not forget, as long as we, as much as we've got a screen, we also have a telephone. Um, so one of the things we need to actively be looking at is right. Let's pick the phone up. If we find people who are interesting, let's pick the phone up and try and talk to them. Let, 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 let's pick the phone up and, uh, and try and say. I think if you sent them a LinkedIn message, you sent them something in a group, it helps because name recognition becomes important. We kind of know the names of people who we see regularly. That's why you want to be doing social things in places like LinkedIn and be posting in groups and so on. Um, the majority of people who I telephone now I'm connected with socially. I have a very high connection rate when I'm trying to get hold of people, or people calling me back when I leave messages because they recognise my name. They don't necessarily know where from, and we don't have a previous relationship, but they'll reckon they'll recognise my name. Um, going back to the same thing is when we're picking the phone up to talk to candidates. Basic things. Back to this. In the introduction. Use the word "you." Talk about and tell people very quickly. This is this is why um, this is why I want to have a conversation. This is what the next step is. This is why I think you're right because it, it it's it's absolutely key that we're pushing that information. We haven't just selected you at random. 
we've selected you we've selected you for a, we've selected you for a reason this is what this reason is this is the research I've done this is the relevance this is why I think you're right to progress to the next stage and be always thinking about the next stage okay what what, what else do we have in Shane yeah we're getting um, like uh, some people asking uh, tips for finding telephone numbers uh, Google people, I think, is the, if you've got somebody's Google. name, Let's just start with Google, Google. Them. Ask, ask Google what's the telephone number for. Yep. Um, th th that's always useful. Um, going back one, so if I look at your LinkedIn profile, um, on your li actually when you're on a LinkedIn profile, you're going to come to the section which has uh, most most people list it. Another fantastic place to get phone numbers, by the way, is um, Facebook has a phone directory. So in Facebook, if we look at Facebook, um, that's a gr another great place for looking for people and saying, is there a phone number? Unless, unless it's a closed profile, very, very easy for you to find different people's phone numbers. Well, one of the other ways that, uh, as, as well as using um, the open internet, you can also use the, the dark web. Uh, I love using the phrase the dark web, nobody really knows what I'm talking about. But what it means is the bits of the internet that are not indexed. And from a recruitment agency point of view, uh, I know um, that people are asking this question, People, places like Career Junction in, in South Africa, um, PNET, you've got access to big databases there, and if you've got the name of somebody, at some point in time, they may well have put their CV up there. So you can be very focused and just search those databases for individual names, and if you do that, then you're going to get a CV with contact details on it. So that's also another really useful way for being able to, um, a, a resource that a lot of recruiters, agency recruiters have to go and search for people. Yeah, exactly right. And I mean, go, get, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed when I search for telephone numbers. Um, you know, if we just uh, 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 this is entirely this is this is entirely at random. Um, but how how let's just try. It. And I have no idea whether this will work or not. So we'll find. There we are. Foot found four people. There we are. Oh, you um, find me? Yeah, that's just, uh, and that's asking Google. And uh, uh, I actually think sometimes with this, all this talk of. Um, Deep web and internet search, and uh, uh, let's forgive the other phone ring. Uh, all, all of the deep web and the internet search and all this kind of stuff. Don't ask Google the simple things. You know, don't make it complicated. Just get, just go and put it in. Uh, and once we've put the information in there, great opportunity for us then to to, to just ask it. And, and you can see there that what I've done is I've asked the question. I've gone in gone in and asked the question, said, uh, phone number for Shane McCusker, they are, we've got them. And, and you can see it's fairly nicely, um, fairly nicely set out in, uh, in people, business and places. So hmm. uh, I hope that gives you, you know, <laughs> nothing. It's quite nothing scary really what nothing. you can do to find people. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah but, but, but I, I actually think, uh, you know, the point I'm making on that, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I think, I think that's the point I want to make is that people don't, um, you know, we complicate things because we think the internet has to be complicated. Ask Google questions like a child. Um, that often gets you the best result. Cool. Um, okay. Um, if there's any more questions coming in, uh, let, it, let us have those. Um, and we'll, we'll try and do a couple more quickly. I don't, I don't know if anything more is coming in. Um, Bill, have you got anything more to add? Because I know we're, we're fairly tight on time. No, I, I, I just think it's important to, to go back to these three R's in all the messaging that you're doing. I, I think you've got to remember, take a bit more time. Um, we went from post and pray to source and spray. People are getting so many messages. Unless they can see the relevance very quickly, they're not going to do it. And make sure you give anyone, when you give them a call, a call to action. So that actual that actual call to that, that actual call to action um, that, that that call to action is inviting them to do something. The other thing I think is absolutely key in your messages is when you're going to people, ask them to look for help. Ask them to look for relevance. 
give them somewhere to go, give them something that you want them to do next, and make sure you're monitoring and looking, looking at what they're doing, and ask them who else they know. Who, it's a great opportunity, who else you know. Back to basic sales techniques, you know, let's, let's not forget what we, we're good at as recruiters, just because the message is on LinkedIn. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think uh, there's uh, one comment that's come in there. Thanks, Lloyd. Uh, who's saying that uh, um, ask ask Google questions like a child, and I think that probably yields good answers. The um, uh, for those people who are interested in Twitter. Uh, um, we've got a competition running at the moment, um, which is if you're interested, if you're in South Africa, you're interested in coming to True SA, or if you're not in South Africa but interested in coming to True SA, uh, all you have to do is send a tweet out with True SA as a hashtag and the link to TrueSA.coza, and you'll be entered into a draw. And we'll be drawing some somebody's name out next week to see if we can get them a free ticket to attend either the Cape Town or the Johannesburg venue. Um, that's wonderful, Bill. Uh, thank you very much for your time. It's always a fascination and a pleasure to talk to you. Um, we'll be speaking again very, very soon, no doubt. Um, and thank you, everybody, for attending today's webinar. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you all in Africa on your home territory. <laughs> it should be a really fascinating experience to it see how it goes. It certainly will be. And the world's watching. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks very much for your time, Bill. And thanks. I'll speak to you all very, very soon. Thank you. Thanks, Shane. Bye. Thanks. Bye.